Well, there's a there's a misstep right at the very beginning. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. I don't know who was there and disappeared and came back, but I had to step away and grab my glass of water. And uh, hey, Addy, uh, happy Monday to you too. Thanks for joining in. And it's time. It is Monday, and time for another. Another edition of Monday Mastery live at five and wherever you all are, I hope you're a lot warmer than we are here in Kansas City. Uh, I think it got up to a high of about nine today and I know we've got a big Arctic blast coming through the country and, and it was just a mess. Uh, freezing rain this morning and so I hope you all are safe, whoever's watching, wherever you are in the country. Um, for those of you Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans, congratulations to, the, to all my Chiefs fans. Uh, it was kind of a miserable, miserable, miserable game yesterday. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. They had some interesting and some weird commercials. Um, hey, Char. Yeah, how are you doing? And and let's see, Sharon. Uh, hey, Sharon, how are you? Yes, Sharon, it, it is a good day. And most of my days are good days. You know, that's one of the things that, that I've come to appreciate in life is that when you start the day out with a positive, a positive thought, a positive attitude, you know, it, 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 there are going to be problems. There's going to be things that come up that, that, that tick us all off, you know, but it's, you know, we have to step back and say, okay, how much of this can I actually control? How much is, is, can I influence? And what, what in my life do I have no control over whatsoever? You know, it's, you know, like, like politics, a lot of people get cranked about politics and I'm one of them, but I try to step away from all that stuff because, I have no control over it. I can only control my vote and and I can't control or, or it, rarely can I influence anybody else's vote. So I've come to the conclusion that, yeah, I just go on and and um, and do what I've got to do. And let's see. Uh, Sil oh, Sylvia. Sylvia says, hi, everyone. 77 and sunny here in South Texas. Ah, that must be nice. <laughs> Addie says, and no one likes a bragger. <laughs> I hope I'm not bragging too much. Uh, so anyway, uh, Janelle, thanks for joining in. Uh, just made lemonade. Uh, Janelle says, just made lemonade to finish my day. There you go. Uh, it, that's, that's that's what it's all about when you've got lemonade uh, uh or when you've got lemons make lemonade so anyway uh looks like we've got a good group showing up here already after just a couple of minutes so let's let's start talking um you know i was having a conversation with a lady with my lady friend this weekend and she she kind of challenged me um because I've I've spent some time rewriting my my I guess what's called in the in in business called your one liner, and my one liner is is a, a brief description of what I do, and I've changed that description to uh, I help singles over forty uh, make better decisions about the relationships they get into. And I've made some adjustments to that over time. And she says, well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you, and because everybody's situation is different. And, uh, and, you know, so no two, no two people are alike. We react differently. So how do you do that? And that brought up a, a, a great conversation and, a, and, and some deep thought on my part. And basically what, what, uh, what I help you do 
is, and this is not a commercial. This is this is this is leading into our conversation today. Uh, but basically, what I do is I I help people uh, get clarity. They well, first of all, we have to step back to the very beginning. You know, we have to you you have to be at a point where you've let go of all of your past relationships. And too many times I've seen people dive into the next relationship, the next relationship, the next relationship without getting past or without working through the, the, the grief, the anger, the, the, the problems with the past relationship or relationships. What I find a lot of times, and I've worked with several, both men and women, that just they're, they're serial daters. Or, or serial monogamists, I should say, they'll they'll go from one relationship to the next, and typically they'll be they'll break up with some with with one person and be in a relationship within a couple of weeks, and they've never given themselves a chance to heal or grieve from the loss of that past relationship. So all this stuff keeps stacking up, and pretty soon it it just takes. It takes a toll on you, and when when you when you haven't taken time to grieve the loss of that past relationship, it's going to impact any future relationship. Uh, and some of the ways that that it's going to impact your relationship, or your future relationships, is you're going to be triggered by things. You're not going to and and and. Uh, when I say triggered, there are going to be things that that set you off or that make you angry or get you upset. And it may not be the your partner's fault. It's something that has happened to you in the past. It's something that that one of your past relationships did to upset you or uh, to to destroy the relationship or uh, to damage the relationship. And you haven't dealt with that from the standpoint, you haven't learned how to recognize that it is a trigger. And you haven't learned how to recognize that that your current your 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 current significant other or the current person you're dating is not the same as the the uh, the person that created the trigger. And it's so important to recognize that uh, I mean, unless you have a, a huge problem with uh, with choosing people uh, and uh, and making good good choices in the people you date, uh, you know, you're, you you have to learn to recognize that that uh, the the person you're dating right now is not your ex. Hey, Teresa, thanks for joining in. Glad to see you here. So you know. The, it's it's so critically important to you know, and and, it, and it's different between being divorced and being widowed. Uh, you know, when when you're divorced, there's some choice in this. You know, you have you have a choice. You can work. You can try to work at at maintaining the marriage, or you know, go to counseling, get therapy, whatever, and and try to make it work. And it doesn't it, it doesn't work all the time. Um, a lot of times counseling, you know, it, it depends on where your mindset is. If you've already checked out of the relationship emotionally, uh, odds are it's, it, it's going to take some brutal, brutal work to get you back into that, into that, uh, into the mindset that you can make the relationship work. There's also the problem with, you know, if you've been cheated on or lied to that, that you get to a point where you're so fed up that that you don't want to work on it on it anymore. Uh, there's a trust issue there, um, and it's all and, and it is a matter of moving past all of these issues. You know, if you've had a trust issue, if you've been cheated on or lied to, uh, don't naturally assume that all men lie or all women cheat or um, you know they're out to get you. That's not the case. You, you've experienced, you've had some bad experiences. It's like I said in my blog last week. You can't assume that that everyone's like your ex, um, because you know when you when you put a global 
when you put a global label on all men cheat, well, how would you know you've had limited experience because you haven't dated every single single man? So, you know, there's, you know, it, you you have you're basing your comments on on limited experience. You're basing it on your experience. Don't misunderstand me. That that's 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 huge. Um, but you, what you the the point here is you have to become healthy before emotionally healthy before you uh before you step out and start dating seriously now it doesn't mean you can't you can't have occasional dates and and uh, explore different types of people different types of personalities and see what you like what you don't like you know date try dating people that you, that you wouldn't normally uh consider dating and you'll find some some really fun and unique characteristics, and then you might find some really creepy things that, or or undesirable characteristics. But that all adds to your to the next phase of your dating, and that's uh, or preparation for dating. And that's building your or creating your must have and your deal breaker list. Um, uh, Geneva says, totally agree. Good. Thanks, Geneva. Thanks for joining in. And Teresa says, it's, it's hard after you've been cheated on or abused, but you are so right. It is not fair to treat all the same and you are hurting yourself. Absolutely. Hey, Barbara, thanks for joining in. That, uh, Teresa, that's, that's absolutely right. And when you start, when you start globalizing or, or uh, saying all men, are terrible. All women are crazy. You know, it, it's not true. You know, it, it may be true based on the, the, the handful of people that you've dated or married and been in relationship with. Um, but that's, it, 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 it's based on your experiences and some of your bad choices. And there, and with, it, 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 with a few exceptions, you can, I'll, I would bet dollars to donuts that most of you can go back and uh, uh, most of you can go back and, sorry, I got distracted by a comment there. Uh, most of you can go back and within the first 30 days of dating your ex-spouse or uh, your the, the last relationship you were in, odds are you can find some of the red flags that, that, really became prominent later in that relationship. Terry says, hey, she Terry's in Vegas today. Well, must be nice. I hope it's warmer out there than it is back in Kansas City. So um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's chilly here. So anyway, it, when you, um, when you, uh, when you step back from globalizing everything uh, or globalizing the opposite sex, and I, when I mean globalizing is say you always or you never um, or all men are or all women are, when you stop globalizing, you'll start to recognize it. You'll, you'll start to find some of the, some of the good people. It, and it, it, you know, psychologically, it's so important to, to recognize that, 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 uh, you'll find whatever you focus on. Science has shown us that that when you focus on the negative, that's exactly what you'll find. When you focus on the positive, that's what you'll start to find. And so when you when you when you take time to heal, when you take time to grieve, when you take time to work through the issues that that were created by your last relationship or last relationships, if you haven't worked through those yet, take that time uh, because then you can get some, you can get your bearings. You can, you can start to reclaim who you are. And for those of you that were in, 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 in a relationship or a marriage for any length of time, um, you know, five years, 10 years, you know, in, in my case, I was with my ex for 25 years. I lost a big chunk of me in that relationship or it was buried it and it took a while for me to to recover some of those things and 
you know, it, it, and we all have to do that because we all, uh, we all morph or we all adjust to make the relationship work. And so it's, it's, it's important to take time to find who you are. Uh, and Teresa says, you have to recognize and own up to how you feel and the way you hurt to be able to move on. That's exactly right. You know, you, and that's, that's, that's key to what I'm talking about here, Teresa, you have to recognize what your, what your triggers are, what makes you, what upsets you, what, what causes you to, to get angry with the opposite sex, what causes you to get angry with yourself. You know, a lot of times we get angry with ourselves for, for making a mistake. And we say, oh, how could I be so stupid? How could I fall for that? You know, why did I, you know, why did I do that? Um, and so, you, you know, when you start, when you start talking like that, um, and if, if you have some questions on that, go back and, and watch or listen to uh, or read my last week's blog that came out on Thursday. Um, Geneva says, please take the time. Uh, I -B -W -A, uh, uh, oh, I, I was with, with mine for 20 years and now been working on myself for over a year. It's been the best thing. Absolutely. Congratulations. And, and uh, you were with him for 20 years. Geneva, give yourself a, you know, another year or so before you really get serious about, uh, about another relationship. Because, you know, you're just, from my experience, you're just now getting to a point where you're starting to see some, some good growth, some good, some good changes in you. And I recognized that uh, about 13 months after my divorce. And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, they, they say that, that it takes about a month for, for every year you were married. And so, you know, if you were married for, for over 20 years, then, um, you know, give yourself another year or so before, before you really start to get serious, find out who you are and, and, um, or, or work your way back to who you were 20 years ago, uh, at least, uh, in your spirit and, and, you know, what, what you found funny, what you found entertaining, um, and, and work your way back from that, uh, or work your way forward, I should say. Um, And Terry says, 40 years married, he passed six years ago, and I'm still trying to figure out who I am. Well, see, and 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 Terry, that's that's a great point. And that's what I do. I started to allude to uh, a little bit ago. There's a there's a difference between um in 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 time that it takes to heal uh, between divorced and widowed, and and I I, and so many of you may argue with me, but my experience shows that it takes significantly longer for a widow to find out, a widow or widower, to, to recover and find out because that's a relationship that ended and you had no choice. And in, in, in many cases, it's, you know, even if it was a disease that took its toll, you still had no choice in how that relationship ended. You couldn't work on it. And, you know, and sometimes there's a lot of anger because your partner was taken away from you and, and, you know, you couldn't control it. You know, there's nothing that you could do to try to make it better, to try to make it work. And so there's, you know, there are differences and, and we have to recognize those differences. And Terry and Char, both, both of you are widows and, uh, you know, those are, those are issues. And I'm so glad that you're taking your time to, to work at it, Terry. That's, that's awesome. And it just takes time. You know, you have to, but, and I think part of, part of what you can do is, is to, to date casually and find out, you know, what, what you like again and what you don't like because, and, and we've all changed. We all evolve over time and what we liked at 20 versus what we like at 50 or 60 or 70 um, is, is a lot different. 
you know, we've hopefully we've matured and learned a few things along the way. Uh, <clears throat> so it it hopefully you're 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 finding some of those things out, but don't and and don't don't date seriously until you're ready. You know, and and especially with widows, uh, you know, we have so many friends and family that say, "Oh," and Terry, I'll use you as an example. Um, Terry, oh, you need to get out. You need to be happy again. You need to find somebody. You need to be in a relationship. Well, they don't understand unless they've lost a spouse, you know, and, 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 and until they do, they can't, they, they, they don't recognize the, the pain, the, the, um, the fog that you go through for the first year or two, um, just trying to get your feet back under you, uh, and, and just, just to, you know, get some stability in your life because you're walking through a house that, that, you know, it, it's, you know, there's like a friend of mine uh, uh, put it the other day is, is I see him everywhere. You know, he's, it, it's like, there's a ghost in the house because I see, I see everything we did in the house because they did some home remodeling and, and um, you know, so it, it's, you know, it, it's hard. And sometimes you have to move out of the house and find some place to to uh, set down new roots, new traditions. Mm -hmm. And let me try to get caught up here. Uh, Shar says, great movie on Amazon Prime. Watched it uh, this morning. And it 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 is just what you're talking about, the secret. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that one. I love that movie, uh, the, the Secret, Dare to Dream. Um, made me hope, uh, dream, cry, loved it. Yeah, that, I've I've watched that. I've actually watched that a couple of times, and it is. I do absolutely agree. Um, it's an awesome movie for any of you that have not seen it. Geneva says absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Barbara says forty four years for me. I was twenty two when I got married. Now sixty seven. I am trying to trust again. But I'm learning as I as I found out who I am now, easier to reach out again. Yes, it just takes time, and you know it. After being and and I know some of your situation, situation, Barbara. After being in an abusive relationship, um, it is hard to trust. It is hard to to um, let your guard down because you you know you're so used to being beaten down either and hopefully not physically but you're you're used to being beaten down verbally or emotionally and uh you know it 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 just takes its toll on all of us you know i look at you know and and i wasn't in the same situation uh, marriage wise but i grew up with a with a father that that called me stupid and an idiot until i was 52 and i finally stood up to him and that was a huge turning point and one of the things that I've learned is that to to change how how you react is that you have to you have to change the voice that you hear in your head. You know, I, I till I was fifty two years old, I had my dad's voice in my head saying, "You're stupid. You're an idiot." And consequently, I lived thinking that that I was I was a phony. And that as soon as people found out who I was, that you know that I that I that I wasn't smart, I wasn't intelligent, um, I didn't know what I was talking about. It you know then they'd all walk away from me. You know I'd lose my business, I'd lose my friends. But that was a voice that that eventually was replaced by my best friend's voice when through a conversation we had and and. Um, he just blew me away and he said, yeah, this is the way I see you. And this is, this is how I see it. You know, our, our friendship, our relationship. And in an instant, my, my whole life changed and my whole outlook changed because I, I replaced my father's voice with my best friend's voice. And the point here is if you had a spouse that was abusive and and um, especially uh, verbally and emotionally, you have to, there are there are techniques. It's it's neurolinguist neuro linguistic programming or NLP. Um, there's a couple of there's some good books out there on it, but you can you can learn how to do that. Or if you've got a counselor or a therapist, you can um, 
have them help you if they if they know about it but it's 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 how to delete the old picture the old voices um or the old voice i i don't want to make it sound like we're crazy here dealing with voices in our heads but we all hear those voices whether it's a good voice or a bad voice and if you have that bad voice you know from from the the words from from people that you once respected or loved um those words need to be replaced with somebody that that from somebody that that uh, that has a better uh, uh, has better intentions for you. Uh, I hope that's making sense. Uh, Teresa says, "32 years, then divorced. It sucks, and I find it hard to blend two families together. It is." Uh, it is easy to get, uh, uh, it is easy, but by God's grace, it will work. Absolutely. And it just takes time, uh, Teresa. It just takes time. But I think if, if it, and it goes to trust issues, you have to recognize that, that not everybody is your ex. You know, you have to recognize that, uh, that, uh, you know, you can replace these these scenarios or these scenes or these these uh, the the voice that you hear that constantly tells you oh, you're no good, you're not you you're, you're nothing without me. Well, when you go out and start doing things on your own, you start surviving, you start becoming successful on your own. You know, those are and you talk to people, you have friends that's that can start encouraging you and be supportive. Those are the voices that you need to supplant. Um, uh, and, and to be able to move on and Teresa, you're right. It is, it is difficult. Uh, it is difficult to blend families, but you know, it it, it takes work. It's not something that, that you can, you can do lightly. Uh, Terry says I have dated casually and talking, uh, and, and taking the time to figure all this out. That's awesome. That's exactly what you need to do, Terry. Um, Sharon says, that's what I'm doing now is, is moving out because my late husband died from died in the house. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Sharon, but you know, those are, those are the types of things that, 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 that can help you move forward because you that way you won't you you can you can start separating yourself from the day-to-day -day stuff uh, that that you and your late husband did Shar says it is hard being widowed from a, a great relationship and uh, men feel like they they might be competing with a ghost uh, of a husband past but I really am looking for a whole new chapter in creating our uh, our own new adventure, not to replace, not a replacement for Al. That's, that's the attitude to take Char. And that's, and, you know, and that, that kind of sent me off onto a rabbit hole there. You know, you're going to, you're going to run into guys that, that have no clue about, about, um, and Terry and, and, um, um, uh, Barbara, there are there are some some people that you're going to date that that don't know about dating widows. You know they don't understand that you know after a year or two or three years you're not ready for a relationship. They they're ready to dive in and and you know I've even met uh, widowers, uh, coached widowers that that say yeah 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 I'm I'm fine and lo and behold, they're not, you know, because they try to, men try to dive into relationships much too quickly and, and don't give themselves the time to heal and grieve the loss of their spouse. So it, it's, it's a, it's a process that, that we all have to go through, whether you're divorced or widowed, there's a process. And it, it took me a lot of years to figure that out. And that's kind of why I'm here today. Um, and Sharon says, that's what I'm doing now is, oh, uh, I've got that one, sorry. Um, I'm, okay, here we go, Sheila. Uh, 
have to let go of the chains, be free. That's exactly right. And that's a great way of putting it, Sheila. Um, thanks for joining in, by the way. Uh, yeah, they're, they're chains. You know, my father had me chained down for, for 52 years. And, you know, when I, when I finally broke that chain, it is actually allowed me to move on to a, a, a much, much, much happier, uh, uh, and much free, much uh, uh, a freeing existence, you know. It and it and it's taken some time to evolve from that. But you know, as as it takes time for all of us to evolve, when we leave a bad relationship, uh, especially if it's toxic and hurtful, and and um, especially emotionally or verbally, and, and and don't misunderstand me, physically is is something never to be to be tolerated. Uh, the minute somebody lays a hand on any of you and guys included, you know, if, if there are guys in here and she starts, she starts laying a hand on you, um, in out of physical violence, then, then it's time to walk away. I mean, that's, that's not a stable, that's not a healthy relationship. Um, and sadly, you know, that, that does happen. And, you know, because we, we, uh, because we, we love our spouse, uh, it, you know, we tend to try to work through it and we tend to try to make excuses for it and say, ah, oh, yeah, he didn't mean it. And we become enablers of that, of that, um, of that bad behavior. And, 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 and to, to a great extent, it, the same thing happens when you, when you put up with, uh, verbal abuse, <clears throat> when you stick around, you're, you're setting the table and saying, yeah, that's okay. I'll take it. You know, I, you know, just because you like the, some of the good stuff, when the, when the negative stuff starts rolling around, ladies, guys, you should be out the door. You know, whenever you start being put down, degraded, um, made fun of, uh, and, and, you know, it, and, and it, we all get teased now and then, but when it's, when it's negative and hurtful and, and you can't, talk about it you can't you can't deal with it on a on a um, on a mature level and say hey listen this hurt my feelings and um, or or you say something and then it comes back to haunt you you know where they use your words against you later on that's the kind of relationship you need to walk away from as soon as you see the um, as soon as you have the uh, those red flags start flying. Um, uh, let's see, Sheila Barbara says, you're right. Learning to see myself differently is very important. Thank you for sharing. It's my pleasure. And that, and that's, you know, that's, that's, that's a great way of putting it. Barbara is, is you, you have to start seeing yourself differently and all too many times, um, we get these pictures in our head based on what somebody else tells us or what somebody else uh, thinks we should believe. And a lot of times we have to step back from that and say, yeah, not so much. And Teresa says, how does a man say they, they love you after only talking for a, a, a couple of times? I say, hey, you don't know me well enough to say you love me. Well, you're the smart one. Um, and what, Teresa, what you're probably experiencing there is infatuation and guys, there was a study done in the UK several years ago uh, about how quickly, uh, men and women say, I love you in a relationship. And while it's generally, while the study recognized, uh, the, uh, a significant difference, men typically say it about twice as fast as women. That um, uh, after only talking to you a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> and Brandy, here I'm going to share this with you, Teresa. Uh, Brandy says, "Run, Teresa," and she's 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 absolutely correct. This is this is a guy that's 
that's not emotional, probably not emotionally mature. I don't know enough about the situation, but I would guess that there's a, a lack of emotional maturity there. And um, he's unable to differentiate between um, between love, infatuation, lust. Uh, there's, you know, it, it, that's a guy that that's going to do. Um, that's a, that's a guy that's going to give you a lot of problems. He's probably a manipulator and uh, will will is probably pretty doggone good at at uh, telling you what you want to hear, what he thinks you want to hear. And uh, Teresa says, "Thank you, Brandy." So thank you, Brandy. Um, Char says, "I get men." Let's see. Let me put my goggles back on here. I get men. I have only visited, uh, I get men I've only visited with online that get very attached just through communicating. Yeah, there's, and, and, uh, Teresa says me too, Char. And you know, that's, that's a, uh, yeah, guys, we get kind of stupid that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, 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 but it's, it's the infatuation it's, it, it has, you know, they're not recognizing you can be having great conversations and, and, um, and, you know, you, you're, he's falling in love with a fantasy. He pictures because of great conversations and, and ladies, uh, it, it, it happens the same for you too. Uh, I've, you know, I, you, you fall in love. We all fall in love with, with a fantasy. You know, it's, it's, we fall in love with somebody we think they are, you know, because of what they've said. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, a lot of times guys are drawn by appearance and, you know, uh, appearance is, um, is, 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 is a big part of a guy's relationship, but, you know, there's, there's still the conversations. You can be smart and sweet and funny. And all of a sudden you're, 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 a um, the, the woman of his dreams, you're his soulmate. But I've, and, and I, and I've run into that on online dating. I've read somebody's profile. And I said, Oh my God, she's my soulmate. And she didn't even bother to return my message. So, I mean, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's crazy what our mind can do. We have to take time. You know, you can have these great conversations and start developing feelings for someone and thinking, oh my gosh, they're great, but you haven't met them. And when you, I've, I've, I've met a couple of, a couple of women along over the years that, that we've had great conversations on the phone. And then all of a sudden we meet and it's, it's like, yeah, there's nothing here. Um, uh, Hey, Rod, thanks for joining in. Rod says, I agree, a lack of emotional maturity. There are also several stages of, of love, from loving things about you to really loving you. Great observation, Rod. Ladies, listen to that. Um, and Susan, let's see, let me get Susan here. Hey, Susan, thanks for joining in. Susan, Susan says, I've experienced the same thing, Teresa. Rick is right. It's uh, total manipulation. Yeah, and that's, thank you, Susan. Um, yeah, it, it manipulation can be, can be nasty. You know, when a guy is, when a guy is looking, and, and generally they're out looking for sex or for somebody to take care of them. Um and that can be a huge, huge, uh, that can be a huge issue. So be aware of that. Um, yes, that is exactly what they do, says Char. Um, Teresa says, amen, a hottie comes, uh, comes along and we have fallen. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Rod says, it's, it's not that different on our end, and I run. Well, you know, that's, that's exactly right. You know, there, there can be the... Um, you know, there are all kinds of different issues, uh, of, uh, when it comes to emotional immaturity, Susan says, uh, same here with online dating, meeting for coffee or tea right away is best, you know, and that, you know, it's interesting, Susan, that you say that because when I started online dating 10 ish or 11 ish years ago, 
I, in general, in general, women were very cautious about meeting and saying, oh, let's talk for a month or so and get to know each other online and you know, maybe progress to phone calls and then and then get to meet. And now, you know, it, it, it's it, it's like, Susan, more more people, women uh, in my case, say, yeah, let's let's um, let's meet sooner rather than later. They don't want to. Um, they don't want to spend a lot of a, a lot of time chatting or in, in conversations, um, only to find out later on that it's that it's not a not a, there's no chemistry. There's it's not a good fit. Um, and and I you know it, it, and, and I, I'm saying that Susan out of out of an observation of how things have changed so quickly, so rapidly over the past five ten years. Uh, and Janelle says, love you to bring, uh, love you to bring in love with you. There you go. Um, and says, and Char says, I agree with Susan. And Susan says, yes, we use, uh, we use it. To, we used to take it slow. Not anymore. And, you know, and, 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 you know, and it's, it, Susan, I don't disagree with getting, getting together sooner for coffee or cocktails and early, early on. I mean, if, if you see that there are, there are some commonalities, you have a couple of good conversations. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of texting. You know, it, it, it's, it's such a time waster. I can have the, in, in what takes me a half an hour to an hour I can, I can do in, in five to 15 minutes on the phone, you know, and I can, I can learn a lot more because you have, you have an additional uh, depth to the conversation of, of voice, uh, intonation, volume. Um, and, you know, there, there's so much more to be learned that way. And, and, you know, we, you can do uh, FaceTime and Skype and, and Zoom and and other other types of video video chats that that allow you to see the person even before you meet to make sure that you know especially ladies and guys tend to lie or use use outdated pictures but ladies uh, I've seen you guys do it too um, and you know so you know you get to see who they are before they actually show up i've been online uh online dating off and on for almost 16 years it's changed not so much uh for the better well you know i think there are a lot more scammers on there right now but you know it's 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 like anything uh susan it's it's using it's it's knowing how to use the tool it's like a carpenter um, is much more skillful with a with a with a handsaw than I am, you know, I, because I don't do that for a living. Um, you know, it, it's 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 like um, you know, if you watch if if you if you watch uh, sporting goods you know, or sporting sporting shows, not sporting goods. Um, if you watch sporting shows where where they're trap shooting or skeet shooting. You know, some of these guys are so skillful, and and they hit virtually everything that 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 flies out in front of them. But you know, for you know, put a shotgun in my hands, and I'm lucky to hit half. You know, so it's it's there are you know it it it, it is a skill, and unless you you learn how to use the tool skillfully, um, and it and it's about you know when it comes to especially when it comes to scammers, ladies, you so often tell me no 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 there's too many too many crazies out there too many scammers out there. Well, but that's where you need to develop your skills is to be able to identify the scammers quickly, you know, because they all leave trails. They're not all that smart. I mean, some of them are. Don't misunderstand me. But they also play on the on on your inability to recognize some key traits. Um, and this, this, this program, uh, this is, is uh, deeply insufficient in, in talking about that. Um, and Susan says, 
Uh, one would think I would have mastered it by now. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you're. I'm. I'm sure you have a master's degree in it. I'm. I. You know. Un, unless. Um, unless you continually make the same mistakes over and over and over again. But you can. You. You know. And this goes for everyone. You can tell when somebody doesn't live in the United States. You know they don't have good. Their their grammar is poor. You know their their uh, their use and understanding of the English language is poor. Um, you know there are there are key signs that that they're scammers when they're a missionary overseas. They're they work on an oil rig and can't access their their bank accounts or. Uh, you know, there's they're on a special mission in Europe or you know, a missions trip. Uh, there are so many, so many tips that should be throwing up red flags. Those are just a couple of them. Um, and Teresa says, you know, when they are scammers, uh, they want iTunes cards. Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, they have a daughter and their and their their wife died in a crash. That's a classic. Um, and <laughs> and Char says, uh, pretty easy to spot them. They do use key traits, uh, very very identify uh, identifiable. I run them run them all through uh, tineye.com and they often show up there. Reverse image software. Oh, I didn't. I've not heard of Tineye. I've used Google search, but I'm going to check out Tineye. Thank you. Um, Addie says, and also they can tell by the times uh, they, and you can also tell by the times they want to chat. That's right, and that's a, that's a good observation. I had a I had an incident with a with a lady several years ago that said she was a nurse. And she said she just got done with her shift. And I said, oh, you work the night shift. And, and be, she said she lived in Kansas. And I said, oh, you work the night shift. And she says, no, I work the day shift. And I said, well, it's, it's 9 o'clock in the morning here. And you're on the same time zone as we are in, in Kansas as we are here. So where are you? And it turns out she was in the Philippines. So, so there are, there are ways of, of, uh, there are ways of, of discerning where these people are. Addie says, oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh. that's got, got that one. Sorry. Um, I'm getting behind here. Lanny. Hey, Lanny, thanks for joining in. Lots of scammers out there, uh, ever changing tactics and, and seem to be one step ahead. I just hope I can report them faster than they get new accounts. Well, and that's and that's a good point, Lanny. It's it's always important when you find one, you need to report them um, to whatever service you're on. And Susan says, "I have never run past never run past a scammer. Just guys who who uh, live locally who aren't who they say they are, or they haven't uh, they haven't given them themselves time from one relationship to the next." Just like you were speaking of over at the beginning of the broadcast, yeah, that's that that happens. You know, it 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 happens on both sides of the of the aisle, so to speak, men and women. We don't give ourselves time, and uh, and and I think men are a little worse at it than women. But I've seen a lot of women, or I've, I've talked to a lot of women that just jump from one to one, the next to the next. You know, serial monogamist. Um, And Char says, and I, I want to go back to Susan for just a second. Susan, that's awesome that that you've never run you you've never run into a scammer. You know, I that that indicates to me that that you've got a profile that's well written, and they're they're not going to um, they're walking past you because they they know that you're smarter than they are. And Char says they also want your email or phone so they can chat off the off the site. Don't do that. That's exactly right. Uh, if they want to get you off site too quickly, um, 
that's that's a that's a great sign that there's a scammer involved. Uh, Char, uh, you're so right. Teresa says you're so right, Char. Uh, and Susan says, oh yes. So there's you know there's there's you know and going back, circling back around a little bit, you know, if you're not emotionally ready uh, and you haven't taken time to to heal emotionally from uh, from past relationships and you start diving in too quickly, you're going to start um, you're going to start dating out of need, uh, being needy and as opposed to dating from a position of strength or wanting to be in a relationship when you date when you're needy it's it, it it's it's just written all over you it's 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 like a an aura or a, a vibe that goes out from you and says here pick me pick me i'm easy you know i'm an easy mark and i'm not saying necessarily you're easy sexually but you're an easy mark um so it's it's uh, you know, so you just have to be careful. And, that's, and, and again, that's why it's so important to get yourself uh, emotionally back in the game. You know, get yourself healthy emotionally before you, before you start dating seriously. Rod says, LOL, one, one clue is that if, uh, if they're a supermodel and are messaging me, yeah, I get that. Uh, a lot of them try to get you to communicate through some other, other means. Exactly. And, uh, you know, there, and, and, and Rod brings up a great point, you know, ladies, you all think it's happening just to you. It happens to us too. It happens to guys and, um, you know, it, 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 it's just, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's just the nature of the beast. But then again, if you're paying attention, if you're, you know, if you're not, if you're not on there and, and you're not being vulnerable, dating from a vulnerable position, then it's, it's, it's a lot easier to spot this stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. That, that's what it, 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 you need to be direct. And Shar says, Rod, I had a friend who just went through that, uh, a mostly naked woman trying to extract money from him. I found her picture in Tin Eye and convinced uh, him he was actually talking to a man in, in a Nigerian phone room. Well, yeah, and good for you, Shar, that, that you were able to find that. And, um, you know, I've I've had some some of those actually show up on through my meetup group trying to trying to uh, trying to join and and um, they're they're actually scammers trying to hit on people and and uh, and and take advantage of people within the group. Ah, oh, let's see. Susan says, "Whatever happened to meeting in the in 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 the produce department? That's what I'm looking for. I guess I better shop stop shopping on Instacart. <laughs> well, you know that's part of it. You know we all have to. You know you, you got to get back out and 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 be seen and and do things. You know, and I know everybody's rules on on COVID are 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 different. And but if you can get out and be out and about, do it. And you know, I've got my meetup group tomorrow, and that's um, you know it, it, weather weather permitting. Uh, we, we because it's been so icy and snowy here today. Uh, I've got to watch and make sure that. But you know, there are groups where you're at. You know, wherever you are. Um, you, you can, you can join, join social groups, meet up other, other church groups, do others, other social things, uh, where you can meet other people and, uh, other singles and just develop your single, your, your circle of single friends. And that's when, you know, when we're married, almost all of our friends are, are married when we get divorced or become widowed. All of our friends are still married, you know, and and we become the third wheel. Now, you know, with some of your closest friends, that's not a big deal, but with others, you know, it just it just gets old after a while. It's it's tough when you go to parties 
and uh, you know everybody's coupled up except you. And so that's why it's so important. Um, and even if 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 um, Susan, like you, I think you said you've been you've been single for sixteen years now. It's important to continue to develop circles of single friends, and and um, you know it it. It, it gives you the opportunity, to, and, and I say circles, because you should have more than one group of friends that you hang around with, because that gives you opportunities to meet to meet people that, that you're, you're not, you're, you're going to meet some people in this group, and then you're going to meet some people in this group, and they're, they're going to be totally different. And so it's, it's good to have two or three or four different circles of friends that you can run with. And because when one group is busy, you can join this other group and 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 go out and have some fun with them. Rod says, uh, the way things are are nowadays, I don't want to be that guy. If you're shopping, working at church, I don't want to bother you. Um, Rod, it's it's not necessarily a bother, and I'm gonna I may disagree with you there. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying hi. I'm Rod, or 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 just starting a conversation. Wow, you look really great today. I love that dress on you. Um, you know, if you're a church, you know that that might be, and and that's all you have to say. And she's, you know, just and and then next week you might say something else. You don't it, it you don't have to hit on anyone. I start I start conversations every day. I see amusing things going on or I'll make a joke with somebody because I have a, a little bit of a sarcastic wit and we'll start joking and laughing around. And that's all that's all that that, that has to happen. You know, you don't have you don't have it you don't have to get a phone number. If you want to get a phone number, that's fine. But um <laughs> I was just listening to something something today to use it as a challenge. And you can ask for a phone number. Says, can I have your phone number? Even if you give me the wrong phone number, would you give me your phone number? <laughs> you know, and it was just, it was just starting a lighthearted conversation. Um, uh, Susan says, yes, after twenty year, after a twenty year marriage. There you go. Um, so it, you've been, you've been divorced almost, almost as long as you were married. And Rod says, uh, I don't want to be a, a weird dirtbag. No, Rod, you're not being weird. Sometimes, you know, it, it depends on your sense of humor. It depends on your comfort level. Um, and, and and it may be in a matter of adjusting uh, adjusting your attitude, recognizing that, that you're being fun, you're being playful. Some people are going to get offended. Absolutely. I've, I've offended people. But you know that's their problem, not mine. You know, I, I, I the first time I met uh, several years ago, I dated a woman. Uh, but the first time I met her, I, I walked up and said, "Hey, how you doing?" And, and started talking to her, and she just kind of looked at me and said, "Who are you, and why are you talking to me?" And I thought, "Oh, well, that didn't go didn't go anywhere near as well as I planned." And but within six months, we were dating. You know, so you just never know where this stuff is going to happen. Uh, Char says, Rod, I have a friend in my community who married last year in their 80s, and her husband went through the church directory, found the one with the pretty smile, and, and cold called her. Got her to uh, go for dinner, and they lived happily ever after today. Or they are living happily ever after today. So, you know, there you go, Rod. You don't know. You're making an assumption that you're being the weird dirt bag. <laughs> and you, you just might be surprised. Um, Teresa says, sometimes the lady would hope you would say something. Then, you know, and that's, I think that's, that goes to Shar's point. Also, you know, ladies are, 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 are as, as, as nervous as we are, Rod, you know, and and I'll I'll admit there are times that, especially in my past, that I was I was uh, more nervous than a cat in a in a room full of rocking chairs, and uh, you know it it's 
you know, sometimes we just have to set our fears aside and our egos aside and say, yeah, let's go ahead and try. And the worst that's going to happen is she's going to say no and think you're weird. Well, okay. Then the, 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 the first word out of your mouth should be next. But more often than not, you're, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Um, Teresa says, I don't, I, I don't get it. I, pff, easy for me to say, I don't get offended. I like to flirt. So there you go, Rod. There's another, there's some more input for you. And Teresa says, I talk to everyone. So, so there you go. Um, Teresa says, if it's genuine, you won't be seen as a dirt bag. Thanks, Sherry. Um, so see, Rod, you've got three women there already that don't even know you and are telling you that that you might need to reevaluate your thought process there. Uh, Sharon says, okay, maybe I will start church hopping. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's one way of doing it too. Uh, and but the whole point is to 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 get out and be social, be um be seen and let people know that you're single, that you're dating, uh, that you're available, uh, and you can't do that. And it's, it, I, and I understand it's been hard over the last, the last year because of COVID and all the restrictions. It, it's, it's hard. Um, but it, it, it's something that, that we all have to do. It's part of the process of, of, getting out and starting a new life. It's getting, it's all part of the process of getting out and dating. You can't, you can't, um, you're, you're not going to find that, that special someone if you're continually home sitting on the couch. You have to be out, you have to be seen, you have to be social, and you have to put in a little bit of effort. Uh, so Rod, I'm saying that specifically to you. You gotta put in a little bit of effort. Um, Shar says, yes, we love attention. Teresa says, yes, we do. And Addie says, I agree, Rod. Talk to those women you see. So there's four, Rod. So they're ganging up on you tonight. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, that is very valuable information. Good, Rod. I'm, I'm glad that was helpful because you got the ladies, ladies you don't even know telling you that, you know, just, uh, to to step out and and step out of your comfort zone. Um, Char says, Rick's right. Give it a go, and if someone is put off, not the girl, you, uh, not not the girl for you anyway. So that that's exactly right. And Susan says, uh, and this we're going to wrap up here. Um, I just moved to my town six months ago. I need to find a, a church. I have been putting it off during COVID. Um, you know, and, and that's a great observation, Susan. A lot of churches have services online. Um, and I'm not sure where you're located, Susan. Um, I know here in Kansas City right now, because I travel a lot, I, I do church online almost every, every Sunday. Um, and, you know, I've got a great church, a great church here. If you want to uh, uh, send me a personal message, I will share that. Well, it, 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 if, if you want to check it out, um, it, it's, a, it's a great, very conservative church. Um, you can watch online and you can start connecting through there. But they, could, they might also be able to help you find a, um, a, a church, a Colorado Springs. Um, they might be able to help you find a, a great church in Colorado Springs. Um, but part of it is, and, and I don't know what your rules out are out are out in Colorado Springs, but start start going to church. You know, go go for three weeks, four weeks, and see if you like like what you hear, um, and 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 roll from there. Uh, but also find also find um, social groups. You know, check check uh, meet up and see if there are some good singles groups. Um, and, and try a few of those and see where, where things go. Uh, and let's see, I'm trying to, uh, let's see, I'm trying to get the next one. Um, uh, and Teresa says, where did you move? Try Mana Church. Yeah, I, I've seen a couple of those and I th there's one around here also. 
Rod says, I'll make it a point to try this, uh, try that this week. Very good, Rod. I, I'm proud of you. Um, uh, oh, Colorado Springs is a church on every corner. Well, then, 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 then it's a matter of, um, then it's a matter of finding, finding the right church for you. Um, the, the one that fits, uh, Susan says, I know of a few, I have just been putting it off. Don't put it off. Just do it. Um, as Tony Robbins says, when would now be a good time? <laughs> if it's something you know that you that you want to do, when would now be a good time? So there you go. But there there are plenty of different places to look, plenty of different things to do. Um, it's just a matter of 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 searching them out, thinking outside the box. Especially if you want to think if if you're looking for guys, you know, in 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 season, go to the golf course and take golf lessons on Saturday morning. Um, go to a shooting range. Um, you know, think of other places that guys are going to hang out. Um, Teresa says, New Life Church is right down the street. Huge mega church. I am sure there must be a few men there. I would think so. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all. Let's just wrap it up here. We're a little over an hour. This is this tonight has just flown by. So, and I'm I'm just looking at the lighting and how the lighting has changed from when the sun was up. Um, I, I'm woefully, woefully prepared here with my lighting. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. I thank you all for your participation. Rod, you got your marching orders from the ladies tonight. Um, time for you to start stepping up outside of your comfort zone and stop thinking that that you're going to be that weird dirt bag. You are not. You're a good guy. And um, thank you, Char. Thank you, Teresa. Um, thank you, Susan. Uh, and let's see. And Susan says, thanks. Uh, let's see. Susan says, thanks so much, Rick. And so nice to chat with everyone. Thank you all for joining. You guys make this. It was a, it was a wonderful evening, wonderful conversation. Uh, thank you all for joining in, and I will see you next week. I hope you all have a great and blessed week. I love you guys. And uh, we'll see you next Monday for Monday Mastery Live at 5.